All right, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Tanya Toshi today. We're going back to the wall. Oh, We've been doing a lot of street fighting self-defense videos lately, but we're taking it back to our roots, and that's right against the wall. So I have one of my close, close friends and training partners, Alidi, and we're going to be working this. So let's bring it in slightly, just so you can see the, the context of why this move works. Now, in a, in a situation where I manage to get an underhook on my training partner, push him against the wall with good head inside position, it's always in my best bet to get my hands on the inside of his body. So this can be the shoulder, the bicep, the head. In this case, I'm grabbing the wrist. Now, as you can see, what are some of the things he can do to free up his wrist? If he just pulls his elbow back, he's going to hit the cage. He's not going to be able to break the grip. So what a lot of guys do is they use either one of their knees. This is his primary post leg, so why would he sacrifice that? Most guys will use their cross knee. So he'll use a cross knee to peel my hand. This is when you go for the uh, Tani Otoshi. As soon as I feel him start to cross, uh, break my grip, I'm gonna step my left leg close to the wall. I want your toes close to the cage length. As I step my toes inside, watch how I fall towards my right hip. So as I step, I fall, I keep good hip, head inside position, and I come up on top. Maintaining wrist control throughout the, the entire uh, movement. So again, I push the lead against the wall, I have really good inside position, I have a, a nice tight waist on him, and my head's driving forward. I go and I attack the wrist. I feel him start to use his cross knee to break my hand. As soon as I see him on one leg, that's the dilemma that I created. I created a situation where he feels the impulse to give up one of his base legs. So he fell right into the trap. As soon as he does that, I step, I jump, and I come up on top. So what, this, this goes with boxing, with jujitsu, with MMA. You're trying to create dilemmas, try dilemmas. I'm making him give me what I want just by managing the inside space. He's always going to give you something, right? Maybe he'll lower his head in order to pull his arm back. What does he give me? Front headlock. Maybe he'll use a cross knee. What do we have? Cross knee? Okay. He gives me cross knee, we'll take the throw. So it's all a matter of what he gives me based on my inside positioning and the sort of stress that I'm putting on him. So once again, I grab his wrist, I have good positioning, he makes a cross knee attempt at a break. I want you to step across to the front of his post leg, drop to your hip, and come up on top. If he tries to go belly down, you're going to drive your head to the far shoulder. And as I do that, I'm going to manage to pin his shoulders flat to the floor and stop him from scrambling up. Let's do it one more time in somewhat normal speed. So once again, I'm inside. I manage to get to the inside position. I get on his waist. He starts to break. Step, walk, head to the far side. And I manage to pin him down in position where he's not able to scramble up. So that's it cause a dilemma or a trilemma, force the guy to a position where he feels he needs to break the grip. He's gonna do this with a cross knee in this case. Look for your Tani Atoshi, which is basically just like a Japanese lat drop. And maintain wrist control throughout the whole sequence. If you like that video, click one of these up here, or one of these, they're both, uh, they have tons of content. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll be back with uh, more videos this week. Thank you guys.